Hi, my name is Arav. I'm in seventh grade, and I'm an Alexa developer, blogger, and programmer. However, in this series, I'll be teaching you about how to create mobile apps. Right now, you may think that using mobile apps is better than creating them, but I hope this course will change your mind. Without further ado, let's get started. So, first of all, what exactly are mobile apps? Well, mobile apps are programs or software designed to run on mobile devices such as uh, iPads, smartphones, and Kindles. Most of us use mobile apps very often. I, for one, watch YouTube, play video games, and listen to music on an almost daily basis. However, most of these mobile applications aren't built by huge corporations, but actually by individual developers. This means that practically anyone, even you and me, can develop our own mobile apps. Now, there are many different programming languages you can use to develop mobile apps. If you're developing for Android, I'd highly suggest using Java or Kotlin, whereas for iOS, you'd be best off with Objective-C or Swift. However, the programming language I'm going to be teaching you isn't any of these. It's a programming language called React Native. So what is React Native? React Native is basically a programming language created by Facebook. Now, why am I teaching you React Native and not one of the others like Java, Kotlin, Objective-C, or Swift? Well, let's say you're building an app and you want to publish it on both Android and iOS. So you use the Java programming language for Android and you use Swift for iOS. Now, when actually building your app, you have to write out all the app's code in Java, publish to Android, and then write out all that same code in Swift and publish it on iOS. This just doubles your time and doubles your effort to publish one app. However, React Native is cross-platform, meaning that practically the same code will work for both Android and iOS. This way, your development time is cut in half. In addition, updates are quicker and easier. If you want to update your app, instead of going into your Java code, updating it, publishing it, going into your Swift code, updating it, and publishing it, just go into your React Native code and update it, and then you're done. Now, these are some of the apps built with React Native. And I'm pretty sure that if Facebook, Instagram, Discord, Tesla, and Pinterest can all use React Native, you'll probably be able to as well. Now, some pros and cons of using React Native. As I mentioned, using React Native means that your app is faster to build because uh, React Native is cross-platform. It also has simplified UI, and it also has a very large developer community, meaning that if you run into some issue, there's a 99% chance that someone before you has run into that issue and they managed to fix it. However, there are a couple cons. React Native is lacking some custom modules. Of course, the chance that you'll need these is fairly low, but again, there's always that possibility. In addition, they, you may run into some compatibility and debugging issues because despite the, all, despite the fact that all of these uh, big tech players use React Native, it's still technically in beta. And yeah, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed it. Remember to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.